Okay, so uh, last lecture, we will talk about uh, adversarial robustness of machine learning model. So specifically, we talk about uh, adversarial attack, right? How we can generate those uh, perfect images and so that the machine learning model will fail the prediction. So that's nice. We understand how we can generate such attack. But I think the most important thing is how we can uh, do the defense, right? So how can we make the machine learning model uh, robust to this kind of adversarial attack? So um, for today, uh, we'll, um, we'll talk about uh, the def some of the defense mechanism. Um, mostly we can categorize into passive and proactive uh, defense mechanism. So this uh, passive defense mechanism uh, basically means uh, we don't modify the model, right? We're trying to uh, develop some approach, trying to identify uh, the attacked uh, images or data, right? Trying to maybe identify them so we can maybe isolate them and filter them out, okay? And the proactive means uh, we want to, you know, uh, modify the machine learning model, right? Maybe we want to train the machine learning model in such a way uh, these models are going to be very robust uh, to this kind of adversarial attack, right? We do, do not specifically identify the attack data, but we want to make the machine learning model uh, more robust uh, to such attack, okay? So let's first look at the uh, passive uh, defense. So we, we have the original image, right? So for the adversarial attack, uh, especially, we doing this kind of uh, perturbation is we adding small uh, noise, right? This attack signal to the original image. And to do this kind of a defense, uh, one way we can do is we can, you know, maybe using some of the pre-processing uh, technique uh, to, to filter uh, this kind of a noise that has been injected uh, to the original data, right? So we, we can add a filter. And hopefully we are able to maybe um, you know, isolate or, you know, able to identify uh, the noisy component uh, that has been added to the original data or image, right? And then we can um, able to um, kind of using the important part, right? Maybe the original image, right? This will not affect uh, the performance of the model, right? Because the, the original machine learning model is trained on this uh, original data with any uh, with that not without any of the uh, perturbation. So it will correctly classify uh, this is a cat image, right? So if we are able to apply some sort of filter to filter out this, uh, you know, added noise, then maybe the machine learning model is still able to uh, recognize, right? This is, should be a cat image, okay? So in this case, right, so if we do this kind of filtering process, uh, the network is able to do the prediction correctly. So obviously we have we can consider uh, different types of filters, right? Uh, the, the most, um, the simplest or the straightforward is we can do some smoothing, right? If we talk about um, the input data is going to be image and the simplest way we can do is do some filtering. Um, so by smoothing the image, so the noise uh, can also be smoothed out, right? And in this case, the added perturbation uh, may be changed or all this can be uh, become less harmful, right? Because we also filter or reduce some of the perturbation, um, you know, the strength of the, the noise, right? Hopefully the network uh, is able to, um, you know, the original trained model on the clean data is able to handle like the small, amount of noise, right? Still recognize this is the tiger cat, okay? So in if you look at here, right? So here uh, we have the original image, right? So with the perturbation and the model predict this is a keyboard with 98% of uh, confidence or accuracy, right? So after smoothing and we are able to predict uh, this image is a tiger cat, okay? So the confidence is 37%, but still uh, this is like the, the highest confident of the class, which is the tiger cat. So you're still able to make the correct uh, prediction, although the confidence is not a very high, but at least the model is not able, is able to predict uh, the right class, right? And if we look at uh, another case, right? So we, we have this 
uh, Tiger Cat, uh, which is have the original confidence is 64%, right? After doing the smoothing, and we are able to predict, still predict this is a Tiger Cat, but it reduced the confidence. So this is one potential uh, side effect, right? Um, so that means what if the original image doesn't have any per added perturbation, right? If we're still doing this kind of pre-processing step, uh, you know, image smoothing, then for some of the images, maybe the model will make a uh, less confident prediction. So that's one uh, side effect of this kind of filtering algorithm, right? Because we are applying this smoothing or filtering process as a pre-processing step for all the input data, right? Um, so we are not able to, um, because we don't know which one has been, which image has been attacked. So we have to apply this filtering for all the images. So this could be one potential uh, side effect uh, for this kind of approach. So besides these kind of smoothing um, as a way of doing the filtering, we can also um, consider other type of pre-processing, right? So one is the uh, image compression, right? So this is uh, often the case in a lot of applications. Um, you know, in typically we are doing some large uh, image uh, storage, right? So we may not able to store the uh, images in the original resolution, right? Um, for example, here, one image, high resolution image uh, has 8.9 uh, megabyte, right? So we need to using or apply some of the compression technique to reduce the size, right? Um, maybe to uh, much smaller uh, size, right? So in this case, the compression algorithm, for example, uh, JPEG or JPEG 2000, right? If we're doing image compression, this can also uh, serve uh, the purpose of image filtering, right? Because we are doing the compression, some of the noise can be uh, removed or because of the uh, compression, it will also introduce some of the uh, compression artifacts, right? So this these kind of artifacts may also destroy the original perturbate uh, signals, right? Remember those signals are purposely des designed, right? Have specific uh, patterns, right? If we have some, introduce some compression artifacts, uh, those noise can be uh, distorted as well. Then, you know, the then if we're using the compressed image to the machine learning model, and then the, the, uh, the model may still able to recognize or predict uh, the corresponding uh, correct class, okay? So that's image compression. And we can also do um, using maybe more fancier, um, you know, using fancier approach, right? Doing the image generation. So you have an input image, right? So we don't know if it's gonna be original image or, uh, you know, attacked image. So what do we do is that we, you know, input this image to a generator to generate um, a filtered or processed image, right? So. We, we want to make sure the image has the same uh, semantic content, right? So if this is a face image, we wanna uh, make sure we preserve uh, the content uh, of the image, but hopefully this kind of generation process can serve as the, you know, a function of filtering, right? Maybe remove some of the noise or change some of specific pattern has been uh, injected into the original image. So this is a generator-based approach to do some filtering. And we can also considering uh, some of the um, data augmentation technique, right? So uh, not just doing some filtering, but we can also consider uh, some of the data augmentation technique, for example, uh, resize the image, right? So for the original input, we can maybe crop out uh, a region and resize it, right? So the crop out region maybe uh, reduce some of the noise, right? And if we also do the resizing, right? Basically doing some interpolation, uh, that is also considered a filtering um, essentially, right? So we are also able to reduce or remove some of the perturbed signal so that uh, the model is able to uh, correctly classify the image. So in, so in this example, right? So the input image is go through, uh, uh, you know, cropping and resizing. So, um, and also do some padding, right? Because we make a smaller version a small crop of the original image and we, we pad it with maybe zeros or maybe a random value. Or if you don't wanna do the padding, right? We can just do the resizing. So we can using the augmented image and go through uh, the trained um, machine learning model. 
So um, before uh, those method, uh, we introduced uh, some of the passive uh, defense mechanism, right? So we do some uh, manipulation uh, from the input, right? We don't specifically change the machine learning model, right? Um, so for the proactive defense, uh, that is we want to change or modify the model somehow, and hopefully the model is going to be uh, more robust to adversarial attack, okay? So the, the common, um, mechanism uh, to improve the robustness of the model is we can do this adversarial training, okay? So we have the original training set, right? So this is the uh, original training set. We have the image or input data point and the corresponding label information as indicated by Y. And so we can, for each of the individual image, right? So we can, actually generate uh, adversarial input uh, you know, for each of this image in this database by using some, uh, some uh, adversarial attack algorithm, right? So, so here the purpose is that we want to um, you know, purposely generate some adversarial examples using some algorithm, maybe a fast grading sign approach, right? So we can using these attack approach to generate the, um, a copy uh, of the original data. So this copy of the data will be adversarial attacked image. So in this case, we have a, we have created a new training data set, right? So this is the original, right? So we have X and this X prime here is the newly generated training data set. So these are the adversarial copy of the original one, okay? And now uh, instead of using the original clean data to train the machine learning model, we consider both, right? So X and X prime, right? So we have a mixture of the clean data and the adversarial uh, attacked um, uh, images, right? X prime. So we mix them together as the training set and we use them to train a machine learning model. So in this case, because of the, during the training, right? The model sees the clean version and also the uh, adversarial attacked image. But uh, remember, when we generate this adversary attack image, right, we enforce the original, the ground truth label, right? We, we force the label to be the same as the clean image. So in a way, you know, when we train the model with the X and X prime, right? So the model knows, right? So although these are some of the small perturbations, but they still have the same, uh, you know, the label, the correct label. Right, so if we train this way and we evaluate uh, on the, a set of uh, unknown test data, even if it's going to be, uh, you know, have some attack, right, which is uh, being attacked by some adversarial um, algorithm, because the model sees these kind of example in the training, is going to be have some uh, level of robustness to such examples. So that's the, um, so that's the idea. We do the adversarial training to improve the robustness. So you can think of this as uh, a type of data augmentation technique, right? So instead of doing like resizing, cropping, you know, color change or, you know, flip, right? We are generating the adversarial uh, counterpart of the original image uh, to specifically improve the adversarial robustness of the machine learning uh, model, okay? So, um, so here uh, are some of the um, reference or papers um, I list here for uh, different uh, adversarial attack approach. So if you're interested, you can go uh, through these uh, papers. Ob obviously this is not like an existing list, but these are some of the typical or common approach for you know, doing adversarial attack. And also uh, there's uh, some of the survey uh, papers are uh, doing, uh, uh, have a collection of adversary attack and a defense approach for machine learning model and specifically for medical image uh, processing. So here are the other two uh, survey papers um, that maybe help you to understand different attack approach and different uh, defense um, approaches for medical image computing. Okay, so that's the uh, some of the you know part we left from the uh, last lecture. Okay.